My name is Lexi Jensen from US Drone Soccer. A drone pilot just like you. We all use lithium polymer batteries for our drones. Probably the first time you got your drone soccer was the time in which you realized that those batteries will become a part of your everyday life. But how much do you know about the battery safety and general maintenance? In this video, I will teach you the basics of what you need to know about battery safety and how to take care of them to ensure that they will live with you as long as possible. Now, just a quick disclaimer. This video should be considered a general advice and in no shape or form includes every single information you need to know about the battery safety and general maintenance. This is just made for educational purposes and the battery safety starts with you. Now that we have this off the table, let's go. If you grab any type of a battery, you will probably see a lot of information that's written on the label on there. But what do those shortcuts actually mean? Let's start with this. Lithium polymer batteries, usually called LiPo, have high energy density, high discharge rate and lightweight, which makes them the great candidate for the technology applications such as drones. By learning the basics of LiPo batteries, you will also learn how to choose the one that's the best for your current use. Battery voltage and cell count. S. Lipo batteries exist in cells. Each one of them has nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, which is also considered a storage voltage, about which we will talk about a little bit later in this video. If a higher voltage is required, those cells can be connected with each other in a series. This is what S stands for in a battery. If you connect two of them in a series, you're gonna get a 2S battery, just like this Google battery from Orca. And since this can be a little bit more complicated, because as you can see, the battery battery here has four cells, but the battery here has six of them. Calculating all of them would be a little bit complicated, so they are referred to as the amount of cells they have. So this battery is considered 6S. And it's really easy because you can see the amount of cells on the side of each one of the batteries that you probably hold in your hands. You can look at your batteries right now to count. But connecting those cells in the series does not mean that there is more power for you and more capacity. It just means that more voltage can be extracted at the same time. More cells generally gives you more power. And since we're on it, parallel connection, P. We already talked about connecting the cells in series, which is giving you more voltage. But what if you need more capacity while using the same type of batteries? This is exactly when parallel connection comes in. If we connect the cells in parallel, meaning they are just next to each other, we would double the endurance, but keep the voltage exactly the same. So the power coming out of those batteries is the same. You just have more time for your flight. And if you are interested, this is how 4S2P battery would look like. Lipo battery capacity size and milliamp hours. The capacity of Lipo batteries is measured in milliamp hours. This is what MAH stands for on the battery. MAH rating is an indication of how much current you can draw from a battery for an hour until it's completely empty. C rating, discharge rate. Some of the batteries for the drones also come with some type of a C rating on the label. And you may be wondering, what is that? The label companies claim that the more C, the faster you can go. And it's partially true. C rating is a maximum discharge rate. So the more power can go out of the battery at once, the faster you can go. By knowing the C rating and the capacity of the battery, we can easily calculate the maximum discharge rate and safe discharge rate of a battery. Balancing leads can be found in any type of a battery that has more than one cell. It is used to ensure that each cell of the battery is balanced together and charged to the same level, so the battery can live longer and work better. It is extremely important to always charge your batteries with the balancing lead to ensure that they will stay with you for the longest time possible. And the number of wires for the balancing cable starts with three for a 2S LiPo and gets one more per each cell, choosing the optimal battery capacity for your needs. Obviously, the more capacity of the battery there is, the more flight time you will be getting out of it. The thing is, though, that each time you are getting more capacity, the battery is usually a little bit heavier, meaning that you will need a little bit more power out of your drone to actually fly it in the most efficient way. For three inch drones that we are using in drone soccer, I would say that the best capacity is 650 to 1000 milliamps. Does flying style affect the battery choice? Short answer, yes. 
Long answer? The bigger the battery, the heavier it's gonna get, meaning that you will need more power to actually fly your drone in a similar way. If you are not used to a really heavy battery, the flying style that you are used to may not be necessarily enough. If you want to have more weight and just destroy all of your enemies with pure power, this is probably a good thing to do. But if you want to be as nimble as possible, I would go for a lower capacity because it requires also less power to get all of this weight up. Also, the center of gravity for the drone is really, really important. So if you want the best possible flight, be sure that whenever you are switching the battery, you still check that it's as even as possible. Dangers connected with LiPo batteries. This is a really vast topic that absolutely requires your attention, so do not turn me off. Do not. Smash that like button and subscribe, but do not turn me off because we're gonna go through it right now. The way in which you store and charge your batteries can affect your life. The batteries we are using for our drones are great. They give us all the juice that we need to power our drones and fly them, but they are also extremely dangerous. And this is not just the fire that I'm talking about. Usually, lipos catch fire when they are physically damaged or not handed well. The fire itself creates a lot of gas and smoke. And here we go, because the smoke is the worst part of it. Never ever get close to the smoke coming out of the battery because this may destroy your nose and your lungs. It is the best to let the battery and the drone just burn down and get away from the smoke as far away as possible. And yes, fire is of course really dangerous as well. So let's talk about handling and charging your batteries now. The perfect voltage. The perfect voltage, also called the nominal voltage, is 3.7 volts. And this is the storage voltage on which your batteries should be if they are not in use. While charged LiPo usually has 4.2 volts per cell, you don't really want to keep those batteries charged to this level if you are not about to fly them for more than three days, because this may damage the battery. Also, the batteries should never go below 3.3 volts because this is also damaging the chemicals that are inside of the battery, meaning that your battery may lose a lot of capacity. I would generally advise you to land your drone whenever it's on 3.5 volts for the pure safety and the fact that I like to be with my batteries as long as possible. How to charge lipos? Choose your charging spot wisely. It is really important to charge your batteries as far away from things that can catch fire as possible. If you have something that's just concrete or stone or far away from everything, this would be absolutely a perfect spot. If you don't have access to any spot like this, charging your batteries in Lipo Safe Bag from iFlight will absolutely help you out with this as well and protect you from fire. How fast should I charge? It is the most advised to charge all of your batteries on 1C for safety, meaning that this battery that's 800 milliamps should be charged at 0.85 amps. Watch closely while charging. Never leave your batteries unattended for too long. If one of them catches fire, you can react as quickly as possible if you are looking at them. This doesn't mean that whenever they are charging, you need to look at straight at them, but you should be somewhere in the area just to be sure. If you notice that any of the batteries is getting warm during charging, also be sure to unplug it and put it in a safe place. The types of charging. Number one and the thing that you should be always doing is the balance charging. The charger monitors the voltage of each cell and can charge them individually while trying to keep them at the same voltage level. This is the safest and most recommended way of LiPo battery charging. Storage charge. The charger brings each cell of the battery to their storage voltage, which is 3.7 volts. And storage charge can either discharge or charge the battery to this exact level, depending on what is the battery level. Discharge. The charger attempts to drain the LiPo battery very, very slowly, even slower than charging. Storage. Sometimes it happens. You know you won't be really flying your drone socket for like two weeks. Maybe you are going for a vacation or to a place that doesn't really like drones or whatever happened in the meantime that didn't allow you to take your drone with you. I bet the list of things that can make it happen is not too long. How to actually store lipos if we want to keep them unused for more than three days? Be sure your lipos are in storage. 3.7 volt per cell. Check the cell status before leaving them unattended with a lipo checker. Store your lipos in the lipo safe bag or a sand pit, as it's not flammable. Keep the battery leads separated because they can short if they touch. Keep balance leads separated or secured as well, due to the same problem. 
Little tip, if you are planning not to use your batteries for more than a month, you can throw them into a fridge. And if any of your balancing leads is damaged, secure it with electrical tape. Do not ever get balance leads to touch each other. Transportation. Transporting lipos from place to place when you are going to fly with your friends or in your school may seem easy. You just throw them into your drone bag and it's absolutely fine. But what happens if you need to fly with them, for example, to Korea? You will have to actually get a little bit more things done. It is required by law that whenever you are taking lithium polymer batteries with you on an airplane, they have to be with you in a carry-on luggage and in a lipo safe bag. You get extra points if you can put every single one of them separately in a small plastic bag so the leads will not touch and there is no danger of catching a short. If you are interested in how to transport your drones and how to travel with them, leave us a comment down below and we'll make a separate video about it. Disposal. Disposing of your lithium polymer batteries should be most importantly safe. Do not ever put your lipo batteries into a trash bin. If you are wondering why, imagine how hot it can get in the trash bin and just explode or cause fire or whenever the trash bin truck is just, you know, crashing it out and causing the same thing. So please do not do it ever. If you want to dispose your batteries, it would be the best to find any of the stores that has battery disposal or to give it to one of your teachers and they will dispose them for you. Quick safety rules. I know that this video has been really long, so here is a really quick cheat sheet for you. Always pick up the lipo by their body, never by the leads. Don't charge your battery immediately after using it. After using it, you probably can feel with your hands that it's a little bit warmer. So you need to wait until it's completely cooled down so it will stay with you for a longer time. Charge your batteries at 1C or less in balance mode. Never use or charge a damaged battery. If your battery has any visible signs of damage, if you are looking at it or it's becoming puffy and you can literally squeeze it and feel it as a little pillow, do not use it. Don't ever overcharge the battery. Usually this is being taken care of by the charger, but sometimes there may be some errors. So be sure to check every once in a while if everything is okay during charging. Don't leave batteries under the sun because it can get hot. Always check the battery cell state with the use of a lipo checker. One cell sometimes can get damaged and not be read anymore by your lipo checker. Whenever something like this happens, ask your teacher what to do with the battery. Thank you very much for surviving with me for this really, really long video. If you have any type of questions regarding batteries, leave them down below in the comments and we will answer every single one of them. Also, just a reminder that we're having a social media challenge. If you want to learn anything about it, here's all the information so you and your team can absolutely join us and get featured on this channel next week. I will see you next week and until then, stay awesome. Bye!